All right. Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, welcome back to our series, Going Through the Bible. And we are going to be looking at the second book of Samuel. Last time we were looking at the first book of Samuel. And today we're going to be looking at the second book of Samuel. And we're going to be looking at chapter 7, verses 18 to 21. So please open your Bibles and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 18 to 21. 2 Samuel or 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 18 to 21. And we read, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, Sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way, O Sovereign Lord? What more can I say to you? You know what your servant is really like, Sovereign Lord. Because of your promise and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. To your servant. God bless reading of his word. Humble before God. Humble before God. So in this passage here we have a little bit of background. Um, we want to also uh, consider that first and second Samuel uh, originally were one book, right? They were put together in one, um, one text, but then they were um, Separated, so we have um, first and second Samuel here. So we here we have the second book of Samuel, or just uh, two Samuel, right? Um, the author is uncertain. It's possible it, it it could be Samuel, but we don't know for sure. And we're still in the um, Old Testament historical books. Um, so the time period that's covered here is. Um, uh, basically the same as in first samuel since they were one book and so that's from the last judge to king solomon's reign and for our bible passage here the context is that um uh, samuel um some of the we often think of him as uh, the prophet samuel um a dedicated priest but samuel is israel's israel's last judge a priest and first prophet I'll read again. So Samuel is Israel's last judge, also a priest, and uh, the first prophet here in the Old Testament in that sense. So as recorded here, um, God makes a covenant with David. And uh, this is what we call the, or it's often referred to as the Davidic covenant, uh, which is then uh, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, right? In Christ Jesus um, this covenant uh, God makes uh, is fulfilled. So in this text that we're looking at today, uh, we're exploring um, King or looking closer at King's, King David's personal prayer to God. And it is, it is a very short prayer as we just read, but it, there's so much in there and it's just astonishing uh, what we can learn from that. So, the topic is, um, we, we see here that um, David's humility is expressed before God uh, that reveals his humble response in praise and gratitude. So, what does it mean to be humble before God? What does it mean to be humble before God? That's our topic we're going to look at. So, when we look at the verses, verses 18, uh, the, the phrase is, O Sovereign Lord, is repeated three times for emphasis. So this expresses King David's intimacy with God. Um, now David is a, uh, at this moment in time, he's a, he's a successful military leader, but he re recognizes that it all comes from the Lord. All his success, everything, comes from God, God Almighty. And so in verse 19, um, we see um, uh, how God works in the lives of believers, uh, God freeing people like King David. And um, that is then um, 
continued in verse 20, uh, where David acknowledges God's grace. And that's a big one. So David acknowledges God's grace uh, towards him, namely King David. And um, there's a good passage here in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians 3.20. Listen to this, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. This is the combination of perceiving God's grace and then humbling himself briefly before God's sovereignty. All right, so I'll read that verse again. Um, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So um, the, uh, the way God, uh, God's grace is revealed, um, um, is, is revealed to us and uh, helps us when our hearts are humbled before God um, and his sovereignty. As we read in, in verse 21, uh, that was verse 20, verse 21, because of your promise and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known to your servant. God bless you with all his words. So the Apostle Paul is acknowledging, likewise, very similar to King David, um, God's sovereignty and the need to be humble um, before God. So we want, we want to ask, what does it mean for you to be humble before God? What does it mean for you to be humble before God? So all of us should remind ourselves um, of the question that David asks in our passage today in verse 18. Um, as we read, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family? that you have brought me this far. God bless you in his word. Why? Why is this important? Because God hears the prayers of the humble. When people are prideful um, or engaged in evil and sin or whatever it may be, God does not hear the prayers. Doesn't mean he doesn't recognize it, but he doesn't, um, they don't resonate with him, right? But the promise is that God does hear the prayers of the um, humble. People are surrendered to him. We find this expressed also in the Old Testament in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Second book of Chronicles chapter 7, 14. It reads, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. God bless the universe word. Another application here we want to consider. Um, God cares about those who are humble. God cares about the humble. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 66 uh, verse 2, chapter 66, the last chapter of Isaiah, verse 2. It reads, Isaiah 66, 2. My hands have made both heaven and earth. They and everything in them are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts, who tremble at my word. God bless you his word. So that's a big one. So another call for humility and having hearts bent and surrendered to our Lord God. And then God's promise that he will exalt the humble. And um, we find this expressed in the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament. In chapter 18, verse 14, Jesus tells us in Luke 18, verse 14, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is, this is the um, 
example Jesus talks about the Pharisee and the uh, publican or also known as the, um, the Pharisee and the tax collector. Let's read that one more time. Uh, Luke 18 verse 14. So Jesus, uh, so, uh, so both are going up to the temple to worship and the Pharisee um, uh, th uh, thinks uh, more hi uh, highly uh, of himself than he should and the um, the um, the sin so-called sinner the tax collector or the publican uh, is not even willing to look up to heaven he's so ashamed going up to the temple and uh, we see his humility expressed so listen to Jesus words again here Jesus says I tell you this sinner not the Pharisee returned home justified before God for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. God bless you in this word. And lastly, remember we're talking about humility here. Uh, and lastly, with a humble heart, we are in the best position to um, let Jesus' grace work in and through us and protecting us from pride and evil. Um, the enemies, one of the enemies' tricks, Satan's tricks, is to... Um, um, push our buttons like to um, uh, to harden our hearts and think we're maybe better than others um, uh, you know um, you know uh, letting us perceive uh, letting letting uh, tempting us to be prideful and that's the path to evil so uh, James in the New Testament writes in James 4 6 to 10 Let's read this one. It's a very, very important one uh, passage and encouraging to. So James 4, uh, verses 6 to 10 reads, And he gives gra grace gra generously. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for the, your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. May God bless you and keep you.